and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So we're going to learn another tune today and we're going to go in a completely different direction from last video where we did a really fast upbeat Beethoven song. This time we're going to do a pretty mellow piece by Cornelius Gerlitt called Prayer. And it's a chorale style work, so lots of, lots of chords and you can imagine voices being sung when you play it. <laughs> Cornelius Gerlitt was a German composer who existed in the 1800s and he composed a lot of music with an educational bent, kind of like our friend Carl Czerny. So a lot of his collections were collections of etudes or, or studies. The piece we're learning today is called Prayer from Opus 130. It's the fourth in a collection of 35 etudes. Now the main challenge of this piece is keeping everything smooth and seamless as it's based on chords. It's actually written in a way, if you ever did any vocal things in high school like vocal jazz or stuff like that, you're familiar with the setup of soprano, soprano alter, <laughs> Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. That's a tongue twister. You should seriously try a soprano, alto, tenor, bass. I really have to work at that. Is that just me? Anyway, so you're, you're probably familiar with that four-part vocal setup. And this piece is written in the same kind of style, only it's on piano. So keeping everything smooth and connected is the main challenge. So I'm going to play it for you so you can get it in your ear, and then we'll go over details. So the first thing to look at is the tempo marking, which is adagio. Adagio is just Italian for slowly, which you probably gathered from listening to the recording. And then we've got our key signature sitting here. So a single F sharp sitting on the line is telling us that the song is based on G scale or it's in the key of G. The next thing to look at are the constant finger number markings. So the most difficult part about this song is to keep everything smooth and connected because you've got these slurs, so you don't want to have any choppy, choppy playing or gaps in the sound. You want to avoid that as much as possible. So the finger markings here are to help maintain that continuity of sound so it doesn't get that broken sound. So be careful to, to pay it lots of heat. It is there for a reason. And when you see something like this four slash five, that means that when you play that note, that chord, or sorry, that tri, <laughs> it's not a chord, it's not a triad, it's just two notes, it's an interval of a fifth. When you play this interval, you start with finger one and four, and then as you're holding it, you do a little switcheroo for, to put your finger five on that top note instead of four. I'll show you what that looks like at the keyboard. So just to give you an example from the beginning, without doing little finger switcheroo, well, I'll, I'll show you that first. So here are the first few notes. And then the next one I land with one and four. But while I'm holding that, I'm gonna shift my pinky to that note so that I'm able to continue playing the phrase. So I'll show you that again. Here's the first couple notes. Little switchamaroo. And I'm gonna do another one of those three to four. Without doing that little switch. It just is a little bit more difficult to, to play completely smooth, so I find it a useful technique. Let's look at these slurs for a moment. So yes, they're telling us which parts to play smoothly, but they're also giving us more information than that. So what I want you to do is imagine this is a song, or sorry, imagine this is a sung composition with lyrics and everything. And you can imagine that the breaks between slurs 
our punctuation, like a comma or a period, or the place that the singer would hesitate for a breath. So piano ne- music needs to breathe just like vocal music, even though that sounds really strange because it's an an- inanimate object, it doesn't need to breathe. But to make the sound more natural, it-, it really does sound good to make sure you lift up the notes and give that air when you're playing. Another difficult aspect of this piece are the dynamic markings. So it starts off as piano, which means quiet. And then as we get further along the song, it transfers to pianissimo, which is twice as quiet. It's just really, really quiet, pianissimo to two piece sitting there. So what what this means is that we have to do all these chordal passages really quietly. Now it's one thing to play smooth with intervals and multiple notes sounded at the same time. It's another thing entirely to be able to do it quietly. So let's go to the keyboard for a minute. One of the hardest parts about playing chords or even just two note intervals is being able to make all the notes sound simultaneously. So it's not so bad when you're playing loud as that translates to pressing the notes quickly. All your fingers are lightning quick and it's easy to hit them all at the same time. But to play quiet, we press more slowly into the keys to make that quiet sound, which can sometimes result in a the, the, the jangle jangle effect. That's not a word. But it, it's more likely to come out when you're playing quiet. So if you're having trouble with this, a good exercise is to just, there's a couple different things you can do, but with some of those, some of those three note chords in there, try alternating the outside notes with the inside note really really quietly and then once you're once you got the outer two notes working for you just practice pressing them maybe four times before moving on to the next one and add add just basically like adding more notes than what's written just to to practice that effect this piece is deceptively difficult if you're a beginner, so don't expect to master right away unless you're really adept at practicing a ton. It'll, it'll take longer than a week. So really work on it phrase by phrase and pay attention to the finer details. Even when you're just learning it, you still want it to sound beautiful. You still want it to sing instead of just like clunk clunk playing a bunch of dumpy chords. So that is my advice to you. Thank you for watching this video and to keep up to date you can subscribe to pianotv.net which is the blog and you can subscribe to this video channel on YouTube and hang out and we'll have lots of piano parties. See you later. And uh, it's lots of fun, it's lots of fun, so much fun!